Alrighty, so I've, uh, I'm altering the stock seat. I've uh, kind of roughed out the foam. I could sand it down, but just as a proof of concept and also maybe to secure this foam down a little bit more, I'm gonna wrap it in saran wrap. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because if I wrap it tight, tape over it, I'll be able to construct a pattern off of that. So you can start off pretty loose. And then once the tape comes in, you could really lock the shape in. The saran wrap is basically just to keep the tape sticking to, to this because um, the tape is really what gives it structure and, uh, and strength. Uh, and then once it's taped in, you basically just cut it out. Alright, looks like every surface is covered. Now, we can get to taping. I'm gonna tape first, running across this way, and then tape long ways. All right, now that we got everything taped, cross taped, we can now start sort of marking out our seams. Um, now generally, motorcycle seats are three panels. Uh, you'll have the top panel, and then, um, which goes off the top face from front to back. And then you'll have the wrap that comes around the side with seams uh, in the rear and at the nose. Um, nose and rear sound like a good place to start marking out where to good, put good seams. Uh, thankfully I have like the center of kind of marked out underneath here. So it's giving me a good idea of where to put those lines. Um, and again, since skins tend to be pretty flexible, um, you know, they, uh, they kind of stretch out. Uh, so that's another thing. You'll want to sort of be mindful of uh, how your material stretches. For example, the vinyl that I'm using um, is this pattern right here and it, it stretches only one way I believe yeah it, it has a uh, more stretch across the uh, longer measurement of this and uh, this is what I will be using for the wrap around the side um, Yes. So I'm just gonna kind of trace along the edge here. I know what I'm gonna be using. Um, out of curiosity, I'm just going to trace out this little funky shape right here with the uh, rider back support. Um, the passenger back support is going to be on a separate pad that is attached to the sissy bar, which I We'll be working on. I had fabricated. I, I altered the stock one uh, for my shorter sissy bar, uh, so I cut the plastic here, sewed all of that, and uh, the only piece I might be using out of this is uh, this, which will attach to the sissy bar. So that will be the back support for the passenger. Because the more comfortable your passenger is, the more they're going to be down to ride with you. Um, 
I'm just now realizing majority of this seat is going to be hand stitched since I can't run the cowhide through my sewing machine. Um, I mean, I, I might be able to, but also I think I'm going to get a better quality seat from hand stitching. Uh, so I'm either going to do a corset stitch or a baseball stitch. And uh, once I master that from my course on YouTube University, I'll be able to uh, apply that skill here. I chose fur on cow hide, or the hair on hide. Uh, one, because I just have it laying around, I can use it for anything else unless I make some, uh, you know, apocalyptic war board coat out of it. But truth be told, I have enough of those. Uh, and, and it also kind of goes with the theme of the bike. So it'll be like, my bike is wearing an apocalyptic war board coat. All right, and of course, when I cut this out and I transfer the pattern onto something else, so this, for example, uh, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna add probably about half an inch around every side. Um, and then sew along, the seam is going to be along the mark, and then I'm going to have a little bit extra uh, to give myself some room. So right now what I have marked out is what I envision will be three panels. Um, this top panel, which goes from nose to tail, peaks out here, that will all have to be hand done. Um, and then side panels on each side. So let's cut this out and I'll show you what I got going on. Alright, so I just uh, slotted off the nose in the rear. It was on pretty tight, which is a good sign. Uh, and now I'm able to just pop this off, hopefully without ripping the uh, foam back that I fabricated. Yep. All right. That's just glued on with barge. Uh, you could get it from any leather store. Um, and uh, it's kind of like a mix between like a Chopper King and Queen, obviously, without the because this is going to be on the sissy bar. I also kind of like the way that it has like a see-through um, and it's just easier to make and to sew that way. Um, cross between that and like a step up, for example, which is like a four or $500 seat. Um, I can make this for cheaper and it'll be custom for me. Uh, all right, so now that I got this out, I'm just going to cut along my seams here. And again, the tape is what's giving the structure. So it's pretty crucial that you do the uh, perpendicular taping pattern. So if you just do one layer of tape, you might have like a gap um, in the saran wrap, and uh, the saran wrap is just there to protect the seat from the tape. So you're not really going to have much structure there. Again, I could have gone duct tape, but I'm literally just using what I have around my studio right now. If I shaped the foam on that seat more, I would have to probably do more panels, or at least um, cut darts or slits in the panels in order to accommodate um, curves. Uh, thankfully, with stuff like this, um, you know, yes, that was all very curvy, but as you can see, after I cut up this bottom piece, um, you can get it to lay mostly flat, which will help with transferring it over. Um, the only problems that you might run into are the curves uh, where the seat wraps underneath the pan, uh, at which point you can cut little triangles out um, to accommodate for those curves where the skin will be stapled to the seat pan itself. To be a little bit less precise with these cuts on the bottom. Uh, and the same will stand true for the hides. Now, um, I can already remember just from looking at the pattern of the actual uh, stock seat that the ripple zones and the places where the skin is going to fold the most are the corners. The most difficult corner being the one uh, right behind where it transitions from the rider's portion of the seat to the passenger's portion. Um, and then, of course, the front and back corners. Uh, but yeah, as you can see here, I got this corner right here. Probably going to have to triangle that one out a little bit. I'm just going to cut a slip for now. Um, that should be all right. Actually, you can cut as many slits as you want because uh, you'll be able to make up the space when you lay out the pattern. Um, and then you can cut the, the darts and slits out of the pattern once it is transferred to the um, to the actual material that you're going to be using. So, so right out there, tighten right, the nose, of course. Get slits in there. So I had to cut some slits along the way. I ended up getting a piece like this that I laid flat. And then once I lay flat, I'll trace across these gaps. Maybe I'll mark them. Uh, so that way I have that material actually on there. Um, 
and then I can just take it away when those holes go, or I'll just wrinkle the holes to take it through them and see how that works. Um, all right. So I got my sides from my pattern. Came out pretty good. Um, I may even transfer this to uh, clear vinyl just so I have a better pattern in case I ever want to rewrap this seat. Um, so yeah, let's do that. And then it might be easier to transfer that over to this because once you start marking and cutting this, you're really in it. All right, change my mind because I'm allowed to do that. Part of the reason why I'm even recording this is accessibility. I'm using materials most people have. If you're rewrapping your own seat, you probably have your own material, but you might not have clear plastic vinyl, which I have just sitting around in my studio. Um, so what I'm doing is I am uh, laying down the pattern face down. So that way, when I have the other side, uh, it'll be the side that I need and because the slight imperfections. Have, I'll have the side that I need. All right, so I'm using a piece of chalk, uh, but if you're using a lighter material, you could just use a pen or the marker that you've been using this whole time. I'm bridging the gaps and the darts on the pattern. Being really careful to hold it down as I trace. I give myself a little bit of room where the dart actually folds over onto itself, which means that that's going to be a stretching point. And again, before I cut this out, I'm going to be giving myself plenty of room on the other side. Plenty of room being about half an inch or so. You can do three quarters of an inch, one inch. may even fold over one of the edges, the top edge, where it meets the uh, cow hide. So we'll mark close, cut, cut far. All right, I got my side panels marked out. Trying to conserve as much of the hide as possible, just because this might be a good uh, hide to have. Also, I think I'm gonna wrap the backrest with it. Uh, same scheme cowhide on the main face lined on the side so generally what I do so I don't have to work with a huge hide is I'll do a rough cut And since I gave myself so much room on the bottom seam, uh, I can cut a little bit closer to that line. quarters of an inch on every side of the line that I drew. Again, I can give myself a little bit less room on the bottom line. Since that is what wraps underneath the seat pan. And I already gave myself uh, about an inch and a half there, maybe two inches. Okay, so I traced out the pattern, cut all my pieces out, sewed up uh, these sides. I'm anticipating some trouble tightening this down, but we'll see how it goes. 
uh, and I made sure to fold over the edges to keep the stitches from tearing out. And I uh, decided to do a hand stitch. So I'm gonna be doing a corset stitch. I uh, could either uh, use a ba baseball stitch or a whip stitch, uh, which is probably the easiest. Um, but I'm gonna do a corset stitch and uh, we'll see how that goes.